So, um, I'm Susan McCallion, and we've got some of our team members here with us today. We've got Tiffany Stokes, who uh, is going to help man the, um, the questions, fielding those. We've got Anna Turner. She and I have worked together for six, maybe more years now, and that's a lot longer than that. Got Kate Hellman. She's a wonderful member of our team from the Northeast. Got Jonathan, and I believe I saw Liz and Patty. So um, we have a few of us here, and we have about 27 people on the call. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you, and we'll go through this, um, some of the presentation I've got, and then spend a lot of time on Q&A. Okay, can everyone see it okay? Yep, looks good. Right. Thank you very much. All right, um, you all probably already know us through our SanibelRealEstateGuide.com website. Um, Jim, my husband's been working hard and Tiffany too on making it mobile responsive and um, we love your feedback. So if you have any feedback for us on how we can make it better or what we're doing well, we'd love to hear it. Um, we're going to go over three myths that some of you may have thought. Number one is the myth is now a bad time to buy a home. I would say no. Uh, we are surprisingly busy right now. Um, we've got people that are buying homes from afar, some of them have come down previous to coronavirus and they're making offers on homes that they saw before. And we have some of them that have not been down for quite a while and they're buying homes and condos now. Um, I am seeing that the sellers are bending a little bit on their prices and I think buyers are able to get a little bit better of a discount right now at this particular time. So now is not a bad time to buy and we're staying pretty busy. I think that um, we've got a V-shaped recovery predicted. Every Friday afternoon, we listen to a national organization keeping current matters um, to hear what the experts in the financial and economic fields have to say about where we're at with um, the economy as it pertains to life as we know it now. Um, and Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley are all predicting a V curve, um, a little bit different than what we had in the last recession, which was a U-curve. Um, prior to the last recession, we had great appreciation of homes. During this, the past six years prior to now, we've had steady growth, but not unreasonable growth. So the experts that we speak to and listen to on Fridays are saying that they're not expecting the housing market to suffer the way it did after the last recession because the cause of our current financial situation is not based on bad loans or a housing, fundamental housing crisis. Um, added to that, over 50% of homeowners in the United States are 50% down uh, paid off on their equity. So uh, we're not expecting to see a large number of foreclosures or short sales. Um, at least that's the predictions now. Sanibel's market right now is a buyer's market in most categories. We have low inventory. That's something to be mindful of right now um, in many categories, but we've got not um, not a 
inundation of buyers here that are shopping. We're very busy, our businesses, but um, we are able to negotiate a little bit better deals for our sellers because our sellers are concerned and, um, you know, they're, they're not reducing their prices yet, but they are negotiating better on those prices. Whoops, sorry. NIF 2, choose the lender with the lowest advertised rates. Um, the buyers that come to Sanibel, I would say about 50% of those buyers are purchasing with cash. Um, and about 50% are using mortgages. We've got local lenders here on the island and in Fort Myers. Um, I recommend that you work with a Florida lender. Doesn't have to be a Sanibel specific lender, but I think Florida lenders have a better understanding of home sales and condo sales here in this area, whether it's uh, knowing the rules and regulations for insurance, taxes, um, they have just a far deeper knowledge base on how to transact Florida properties. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go with the lowest advertised rate. And the reason why I wouldn't is because some of the prices can be put in other categories. So for example, um, I had someone call the other day touting a, a loan that she saw on a national site and it was phenomenal. It sounded great, but then when we looked into the details, it meant that she had to have 25% down and buy two points. So just make sure that as you're choosing a lender, please look at the, all the fine print and um, try to compare your lenders as best you can apple to apple. Anyone on my team want to add anything to that? Will I get myself back on track? I just, I agree totally with that, mainly because um, not just the lender and the salesman, but the processors. And that's who really knows our market. And the fact that we're on a barrier island doesn't scare them. Um, and they actually, a lot of times, can help you navigate the insurance issues. And they, they all work together as a team. I think they all the ones that we've used anyway, locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agree. Um, myth number three, it's cheaper to buy a fixer upper. How many of you think that? <laughs> it can be if you're handy. Um, but if you're planning on buying a fixer upper and hiring a contractor to come and do the work, it may not be cheaper, especially in this particular market where I think that um, there are some wonderful homes for sale that I think at the end of the day, when they close, they'll, you'll get a better deal on a beautifully renovated home versus one that's been, um, versus one that you would need to fix up yourself. Um, there are a group of excellent contractors on Sanibel. They do a great job. They're used to working with out of state um, owners. So they're good at communicating and um, they're most, I've got great relationships with all of them. Um, and they'll keep you in the loop for sure. But um, you have to weigh out fixing it up yourself, getting it just the way you want, and paying maybe just a little bit more to do that um, or buying something already done. What has changed in the home buying process since COVID-19? Well, there's a lot that's changed since COVID-19. Um, first of all, we're all working from our homes and uh, I'm working in my lower level area, um, which is not finished. <laughs> um, and we're all making do, our office is open by appointment only. 
and we are showing homes by appointment only. We use masks and gloves uh, for our listings. We open up the listings to buyers and their agents. We try to keep all of the lights on for them so they don't have to touch anything. All of the doors are open. Um, for us, when we're going to do a video showing for clients, which we are doing a lot of right now, um, we're spending a, a solid half hour in a home. Um, Kate could probably talk a little bit to this and making sure that we um, spend time with each, each room and going back to rooms. Kate, why don't you mention a little bit of your experience? Well, we've been doing a lot of, of video showings, as she said, or creating a video to send to people both ways, either virtual or sending you the video. Um, and, and it can work out two different ways. One, it can be a FaceTime showing, can be a very, very specific showing just to you as if you're in the house. So if you want to know how wide a doorway is, then I have a, I always have a measuring tape with me and I can measure it right there. So it's, it's you in the house guiding me through it. Um, and then doing a video, we try very hard to be able to walk through and give you the flow and the feeling of the house without us talking too much because we have our own opinions and they're not your opinions. Um, but then we can send that to you so you can, we can both refer back to it often on, you know, what was that or how did this go or can I see that again or, or whatever. And it's working out really quite, quite well. Yeah. Um, I showed three homes on Monday and it took a couple hours, but we were able to really go back, look in cabinets, get a real feel for the type of materials, construction materials used in the homes. And um, then after the fact, in some cases, I'll go back and videotape. So if I have you on FaceTime for the virtual showing, um, we can go back and do a quick video of that showing as well. Um, I've even measured the depth of canals with a measuring tape on, on a video showing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we use FaceTime, we use Zoom, uh, and we use Facebook for our recordings. Anybody else have something to add for video showings? Um, just like before, when you buy a home here on Sandoval or in Southwest Florida, you may not be here during the inspection period. And we do um, still go to inspections. The inspectors don't allow us to be in the house or the condo while they're doing their inspection, but we're available either in our cars or on a porch or five minutes away to get them started and then come back and finish up. Um, so we're trying to be mindful of personal protective equipment and keeping everyone safe um, but getting the summaries for you and making sure that everything is done correctly. Um, anyone else have something to Su add to that? Susan, is, are there any sort of addendums or, or um, amendments to contracts with, in regards to COVID? There, there are, there is a COVID addendum. Um, Kate, you wanna chat about that a little bit? Um, I actually haven't used the COVID addendum yet, to be honest with you, but um, it, 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 it can be used. It depends on how the contract is. I think it's a, a really great tool if the contract was started prior to everything being locked down because timing changes then. And so this is sort of a blanket addendum to be able to keep everybody in the process, but safe. And everyone's got their money and the timing and no one's going to be penalized because of COVID-19. Um, I think what we do now when we're writing contracts is we're a lot more mindful of timing issues that could be happening. And so maybe we're asking for a little bit more of an inspection period or um, an extended mm -hmm. closing possibly because FedEx decided to take a left instead of a right and nothing got where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. And so COVID the COVID-19 um, addendum can cover all those kinds of things if needed. Yeah. Extensions. 
Extensions. Sorry? I said extensions mainly. Yeah. Yep. Um, for example, we, the, we have the ability to extend if you're under quarantine and you have that 14 day um, provision where you have to quarantine, we can work with the COVID extension to allow for more time. Right. Um, Lynn had some questions. Do you mind if I read one of the questions out, Lynn? I was wondering about condo fees, HOA fees in general, and um, also I see these costs itemized in the off-island properties and not itemized in the Sanibel, for example, Mariner Point. Um, so each condo complex and HOA complex covers different items. Some may cover everything from uh, insurance for the pool, pool maintenance, lawn, uh, they may cover water, sewer, trash, um, TV, some cover phone, not many. Um, most associations, condo associations, cover your insurance for the exterior of the building. And when it comes to flood insurance, they cover the interior of the building as well, but not the contents. That's for condos. For HOAs, um, the HOAs on Sanibel are not as strict as some off-island communities that I have seen. Um, I'll give you my example. We live in the Dreams neighborhood. My HOA fee is about $140 per year. Um, it covers the cookies and lemonade at the annual meeting. It covers the sign and the cul-de-sacs. Uh, and then the one pond that is owned by the association. But it doesn't uh, cover a lot of additional items. It doesn't cover greens fees for golfing. It doesn't cover tennis courts. Um, so each neighborhood is different. Something that's really important for buyers to know when they're buying in the state of Florida is that when you buy a home or a condo that is in an association, you have three days to review the condo docs, the budget, the facts. And if there's anything within that three days that you're not satisfied with or comfortable with, you can cancel the contract and get your deposit back. That's a state, that's a state law. So um, it starts from the date that you receive your condo docs. Um, so good to know. And thank you, Lynn, for that question. Um, a common question that I get from lots of people is, we will ask, are you interested in a home or a condo? And some people like the allure of uh, not having to do lawn work and the ease of coming and going with a condo. Uh, and some people like the benefit of having their own yard to have cookouts in and their own space for their pets. Um, really, it's a matter of preference. If we put them side by side financially, they can kind of shake out to be very, very similar. Um, condos can be at the same price point as homes. Um, you can sometimes get a better rental income on a condo if it's a weekly rental condo versus all homes on Sandoval have a 28 day minimum rental. Um, so I think what you need to consider first is how will you use your home or condo on Sanibel? And once you figure out your lifestyle and how you expect to live here, then I think you can fine tune whether you would like a condo or a house. Um, I can keep on reading some questions, but I don't want to not listen to any questions that may be out there. Anybody? Okay, and I'm gonna keep on going. Um, okay, special A parking pass. Annie, you wanna talk about the parking pass? Oh, sure, uh, being an a island property owner, you can buy a parking pass up at the Sanibel Recreation Center. It's through the city, but at the rec, and it's $12 a year. 
Uh, you have uh, over 20 parking places that residents only can park in. Um, our favorite is out West Gulf. Uh, parking space uh, access is one through seven. And that's at the West End where it's really good fishing. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> And um, it, it's just great. It's a great place. There, there are like five or six parking spaces, um, but you also have access to the Lighthouse Beach um, and Tarpon Bay Road, which are larger parking lots. And um, it's just a great bonus. I mean, a lot of people who buy, the first thing they do is take their deed down to the rec center so they can get their $12 parking pass. And it's good for a year, November to November. And then people, um, yeah, that's, that's about all I have to say. That was probably, uh, my parents lived on the island. That was one of their favorite things was to be able to go to the more private areas like you have your own little island out there. If you were on Sanibel right now, you could be going to the A sticker places right now with your car. Yes. They're I, still our open. Family, our family has been doing that throughout isolation. We yep. go to the beach yep. and take walks and it's been great. Yeah. Um, and in order to get the pass, um, the question is, I have an Illinois address and I own a property on Sanibel. Can I get the pass? Absolutely. You just have to show proof of ownership and that could be a utility bill uh, and your driver's license, even if your driver's license is out of state. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you can prove ownership, um, then you can get the A pass. Buying versus renting. Michelle, your question is a good one. Um, if you're here for three to six months out of the year and you expect to be here during the winter months, the three months in winter, is that what you're thinking? Maybe. Uh, yeah, we really didn't, really not sure. I think we were thinking mostly like coming down after the Christmas holidays and then staying until about June or July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, it would be mighty expensive to rent a place for a season every year. And I think that, um, depending on the place you rent, it may make more sense to buy a home. Um, if you were to say you wanted to rent in October, November, December, um, then maybe it would make sense to rent, not own. But if you're gonna rent and stay in your place during the bulk of high season, um, yeah. I think it might make more sense to buy. And then, you know, maybe you could try to rent during the slow season. Um, rentals during the slow season being June, July, and the first half of August are about half of what you would get during high season. So it might be able to defray some of your costs um, if you took that approach. Um, let me see. Feel free to pipe in if you've got more questions. Susan, we had a question come in about how is Sanibel for families with young children? This will be perfect for you to answer. We love the island, but are concerned that the majority of new residents are empty nesters. Okay, that's a great question. So, you know, I, I've raised four kids on the island and um, I, I moved here when my oldest was in third grade and my youngest was in kindergarten. And then we had, uh, a baby while we were here. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. No idea what happened. All right. Um, let's see. All right. I don't know, Tiffany, if you can help figure that out. I, I think that um, Elizabeth Stevenson accidentally shared her screen. So Elizabeth, if you just click the stop sharing screen, um, should be a red option near the top of your screen, it should go back to just looking at us. But you can continue talking, Susan. Okay, very good. So, um, you know, I love raising kids on Sanibel. I think that my kids, um, 
I feel as a mom, I have felt safe with them riding their bikes around. And um, I love that we know our neighbors and I love the school. Sanibel School was a great place for our kids to go. It's a smaller school, it's a small town. Um, and I think it's a great place for families. So there are a good number of younger families. Um, I'm guessing our student population at Sanibel School is about 300 kids this year. I don't know if Anna knows the firm number, but um, there are kids that um, homeschool here. There are kids that go to other schools. Um, and I think there's a lot of options here for families. So I hope that answers the question. Anna used to be our school nurse. I hope you don't mind that I shared that, Anna. Oh, yeah. So I raised three children and they all went to a Sanibel school. It's two, two classrooms per grade, um, K through eight. And it was, it's a great community and I wouldn't have done it any other way. It was <laughs> I'm biased, but. <laughs> And they're all out of college now, so they had good ground, good ground. <laughs> good. Okay. Um, any others? No Sam's. Make us okay. Thank you for the yeah. question. Um, question from Kylie. Uh, how Sandoval for families? Uh, Thank you, sorry about that. Uh, no seems make us hesitate to live on Sanibel. Any surefire methods to mitigate? Okay, Rob, well, um, I will tell you that sitting, watching our kids uh, play baseball in the spring was tough. And I used to bring with me olive oil and put olive oil on my skin. Um, so no seems can be a pain. They come around spring, summer, and fall, and they're worse in sunrise and sunset. During the day, I don't really see them as a problem. Um, it's funny, when people come to Sanibel, you can sometimes tell the new residents because they have blotchy legs. I don't know, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, I don't know if we build an immunity, but I will tell you, that our youngest child, Caitlin, when we first moved to Sanibel, we used to call her the Calamine Kid. Every day she would go to school and she would meet with Miss Anna Turner. Yep. And Miss Anna Turner would administer Calamine liberally to Caitlin's legs. And, um, we've lived on the island for 12 years now and she no longer splotches. I think that was just her first year, so. I hope that answers your question. Island Pharmacy has some terrific, it has a terrific topical cream that they've created. Um, for if, if you do get bitten, you put it right on, it's even better than calamine. Oh. Mm -hmm. We have that now. Yeah, it's <laughs> good stuff. Although we don't use it much, but I always have it. Right, gotta have it for the visitors. Yeah. Um, how much do you spend on average going back and forth across the bridge yearly? So before my older kids started going to high school, uh, I probably went off the island once a, every two weeks or so. So I had a $50 annual pass, which meant that every time I went back on the bridge, it was $2 and that worked just fine. Uh, now I've got two of my kids that are licensed drivers and they're on and off island every day. So we spend $400 per car for unlimited on off. And for Jim, we do the $50 because he pretty much stays here. Actually, if you have a second car, it's $200. Oh. So you. if you add it to the same account, it's $200. Ah, perfect. So you need a, a refund. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. I, you know, I haven't seen the bill. So <laughs> that's probably okay. what it is for us. Um, You know, we used to live in um, Miami and we used to have horrible fire ants in Miami. I don't see them so much here, but they are here. And I attest that grits help 
get rid of fire ants. So if you think rain is coming, just pour a little grits over the fire ant mound and that helps them go away. Uh, any other questions? All right, well, we are always here for you uh, to reach out if you have any questions whatsoever. I hope you found this somewhat beneficial. Um, we love our island and we love to talk about it. Um, and we're here to answer any questions you might have. Keep in mind, SanibelRealEstateGuide.com. We're all ready to chat when you're ready. All right. All right. I'm going to log off. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.